What's up everybody? Josh here with Planet Chinchilla. Um, <clears throat> been out for about a week again. Um, had some work related trips I had to take but uh, I wanted to get a quick video today of this is what happens when you wait about eight days instead of the typical three to four to clean a cage. Um, Chinchilla's cages need cleaned uh, at least twice a week is my opinion. About every three days is like ideal. Um, but I was out and my wife isn't quite familiar with how we do all the fleece liners and wash them, make sure they're on cold water, things like that. So we just kind of waited, um, you know, just one chinchilla like her here. She doesn't make everything too incredibly filthy by herself. Now, when I add her a cage mate, that might change the story, but now you get to see a totally stripped down cage because... I have two sets of the liners, the other one I had not cleaned, kind of like an idiot. Um, so now they're all in the washer on cold water. She's out playing around right now. Um, entire cage is broken down. So I just wanted to kind of go through some of the steps that I do for these over <clears throat> overdue cleanings when they do occur, because they will. I mean, we all get busy, right? So there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Of course, you want to try and keep up on it when you can. but. These are the liners that are the trays that go in the cages here. So you can see that these are clean now, but they weren't. Even though they had the fleece liners, a little bit of urine residue will still penetrate down. And I am trying to potty train her. So it does work, guys. Uh, don't give up on it if you thought about it. But you can see, so the poop's irrelevant. You're not going to potty train a chinchilla to poop um, in these. But most of this is soaked with urine. So I will change that out too here towards the end of the cleaning and I'm trying to eliminate her urinating on all of these trays all the time. But they clean up really easy. Just some distilled vinegar and a rag and she's good to go. She's just kind of out having the time of her life because she gets to be out for about hour, hour and a half while I figure out everything else right now for this cage. But yeah, I have other videos where you guys can see this kind of stuff. I do have the dual feeders in here and that's just I, I don't like to take a risk of anything happening um, you know if my flight would have been delayed it would have been another few days before I would have been home or something came up from work which I don't leave like that often so it's not that I try and build her cage to leave her alone for months but I'm just OCD and I like to be prepared so I always have the double dual hay feeders I always have two water bottles and she does rotate between both of these. So she uses this one, and this is her primary one that she uses more frequently down on her bottom level. You got the multiple shelves, okay? So you got the little hay cubes, you got her hammock up top, her hanging toys that she chews on, the potty training, more hanging toys, her hiding box, of course. Don't ever not have a hiding box in the cage, people. Um, that's how they feel safe. That's how they get crazy like she is now probably eating my books she took her dust bath just a minute ago over here in her bowl you can see all of her footprints so usually she'll sit here and eat some of these oats when she's out but she just goes and does whatever she wants for a little bit but yeah keep up on your cage cleaning so you don't have to go through this nightmare that I'm going through today which it's not bad I don't want to want to make it sound like it's this big deal to clean the cage thoroughly if you get behind it's not it's easy it's going to take me about 45 minutes total minus the drying time for the fleece liners which if you guys haven't invested in fleece liners you've got to do that the bedding see like all right let me show you guys so i have the bedding her little travel carrier here let me rotate this camera so i have the bedding in there and she'll go in there if I can't get her back into her cage for whatever reason or she's being stubborn. I'll use that little travel carrier to get her back into her cage. Rarely do I have to, but clearly we all know what like normal gerbil bedding is, right? So it's a pain in the butt, especially if you've used fleece. Now, fleece is so much easier. You wash it with one chinchilla, you could easily wash it once a week. You're never going to get a urine smell. You're never going to get really any physical signs that it's even dirty after a week um, you definitely need to wash it if you have two chinchillas in one of these critter nation two cages um, you definitely want to be doing it probably twice a week 
because they do poop. They do chew those hay cubes. It's going to, these little hay cubes, which I'll grab while you guys watch her eat her oats out of her can, these hay cubes leave a residue. So these guys here, if I can get it in there, they leave a little bit of a residue on those fleece liners. Um, plus, you just don't want your cage to stink. Like, I mean, chinchillas are such a clean animal that if the, the one thing that you have to do to prevent any kind of odor ever happening with them, just clean the cage. Like it, it's that easy. They're they're so easy to clean. I popped all these out on these Critter Nation Two cages, and I'll just kind of go through kind of like a quick review of this cage for you guys too. Um, I mean, when they come in the box, you have about you have one, two, three, four. You have four doors to put on the tool levels and the trays, which the trays are those black things there that I was showing you just a minute ago. So these are built. So that you can have a second chinchilla if you choose. This, that's this hole here is going to allow her to be shut down from the second level if I had another one. Which is still going to give you a two level cage for both chinchillas. So you got bottom level, level two, level three, level four. Personally, sh she uses every level. And I get that if there's another chinchilla in there that they would just interact together. And I'll share it or you could shut it down. But like, I mean, I'm debating between just buying another Critter Nation dual level cage for a second chinchilla or putting the other one in there for them to interact. Um, because it's like this huge castle for them, right? So why not? I mean, I have two water bottles. She's got her hammock, her toys, plenty of, I mean, these guys jump and go all over the place. They're crazy. Which, I mean, if you, if you guys haven't ever done this experiment too, it's pretty fun. If you're somewhat of a new chinchilla owner, so I've only had my chinchilla... Oh, uh, I mean, she's about a year old, so I, I haven't had her, you know, for five, ten years like some other people, but down in this basement, we have a ton of lights, you know, um, like the movie theater lighting, lights on the walls, you got the YouTube studio lights. If I just dim down, like, seven of these lights, it's like the nocturnal nature in her um, comes out at full scale. Uh, now, all of a sudden, instead of being in her hiding box... You dim the lights, she's, you know, swinging from the raptors down here. She goes crazy. So it, it's clear to me that if I were to set this camera recording overnight just to watch her, she's probably just going bonkers in that cage, having a good old time, which is awesome. I mean, that's the goal. So I used to have a smaller cage, and I'm happy knowing that if I get her out at 5 a.m. and I interact with her for 30 minutes, and then my day gets away from me at that point that she's fine you know she's got her water her food her comfortable fleece you know the potty training that's half failure half success right now um, I know that she's fine I don't worry about her needing something to do with these big cages there's plenty for her to do in there um, you know she still gets extremely anxious to come out of her cage uh, I mean don't get me wrong there's nothing that substitutes the human interaction even if it's me and my two-year-old son me and my wife just me even my dog will come down here and she is what's hilarious is she is not scared of my dog at all but my dog is terrified of her so like I have a blog post which I'll link to in the description below that's you know can chinchillas and dogs interact I don't really know um, so I can't give you any kind of legitimate answer that's credible enough that's gonna save a chinchilla's life by any means but um, I can tell you that she comes to the front of her cage front and center, you know, ready to go, ready to play. And he's a hundred pound lab that backs up towards, you know, this little baby gate over here. It's actually hilarious. Like she's like, let's go, man. Let's learn to play with each other here. And he's like, no, I don't have any clue what that thing is. Like he just can't handle it. So needless to say, I do not let her out to play with him one-on-one. -on -one. I keep them separated. I do think that they would be okay with supervision. That's my opinion. I'm just, too big of a um, was to try it yet. I'm a little too new into the chinchilla owner's game. I mean, five years in, sure, I'll, I'll be a little bit more uh, proactive about trying new things, but a little over one year in, even though I feel like I know about everything there is to know about these guys, I'm not willing to let my 100 pound lab accidentally step on her or do anything crazy like that. But yeah, super easy to clean cages. Um, Keep up on them. This is the cage I'd recommend hands down. So there's one other website online. And like I know that people, I blog about chinchillas all day when I'm not working. Like this is what I like to do. 
I know that people search endlessly for the right answers, right? So they're on forums, they're on Facebook. I'm in communities on Facebook. It's extremely simple with these guys, everybody. Um, a big cage that's safe, that preferably, so these metal bottoms here, if you want to avoid, um, and that's what you'd be using. So you would be having bedding under a tray like that if you didn't use fleece liners, which would be the same bedding that I showed you inside of that travel kit cage. Like that's just a pain in the rear. Um, you're gonna be shop vacing, which buy a shop vac it's, and keep it right by the cage. Um, for all the haters on the electrical cord there, I know um, she's never messed with it and it's the only cord down here that is not protected. So I will prove that at least so it doesn't look like I'm an idiot. All my cords are protected and wrapped to keep her safe. No cords underneath the computers here. Even this fan cord over here. I mean, minus that USB charging cord for my phone. It's protected down at the bottom, wrapped. Um, <clears throat> so there's two places. Let me get back to what I was saying here. Two places you can get these cages, and it depends on your budget. Um, you could do the, the single level Critter Nation, which is this cage minus the bottom. So, or minus the top, however you want to view it. But this separator right here, this spot where these punch in, right here, this would not be here. So this whole top level. That's about $110 on Amazon. Then you got the dual level, which you're looking at, which is about $210 on Amazon, which you can stack more. You can do whatever you want with these. You could buy the one level and come back to the two level. And then there's one other vendor that I'm extremely interested in trying, but they're extremely expensive. Um, it's Critter Cages, I believe it's called. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but they will custom build out of Texas these awesome cages. I mean, they're just shelves everywhere. It's like six flags for chinchillas, but they're like six, seven, eight hundred bucks. Some are like four or five hundred. And I haven't found a reason that justifies that, even though I know she would love it. The problem I have with it is chinchillas chew wood. So those wood shelves that you see in her cage here, she will chew that. Um, so eventually you have to just cut, you know, with a saw or buy them more little shelves and if that entire cage is made out of wood like how good is that gonna, cage going to be and for what duration of time for $500 when I know that this I pay $200 I'm done forever you know then I go down to 10 months $10 a month in expenses and I'm done right so I just you know I'll have to replace a couple shelves here and there or you know clearly buy her hay and just the ethical things you do for food water etc but I haven't found a reason to pull the trigger, but I am strongly considering it. I mean, if any of you have actually used that, one of those custom cages, please leave a link below, comment, let us know how it's going. Like, are they chewing the hell out of these shelves that are inside of the cage like that one there? Just like the, the hiding boxes. So this used to be perfectly cut. And again, I haven't had her for 20 years or anything crazy like that. And you can see, all of the chewing, like this board is sawed down about half an inch from her teeth, inside and out. I mean, they chew. It's what they do. They have rat-like teeth. It's what they're going to do. The good news is they don't really bite ever. She, okay, she's risking injury now, trying to be a show-off for the camera, which is good because most of my videos suck, which I apologize for. Like, she just, you know, stares at me like, you know, she's drunk and doesn't know how to do anything, or she just knows I'm making a video and wants to ruin my life. I'm not really sure. Um, today, she's much more out and about. She might just be happy that I'm cleaning her cage, and it's been eight days, and she probably wants to punch me in the face. I'm not really sure. But anyways, yeah. I mean, hang out with Chili here for a second. Let her wander around. Guys, this is perfectly fine for a room, too. So that's the, the next biggest thing I see on these communities, like relax about the rooms um, I was so paranoid when I first got her that I used a pop-up tent that I ordered on Amazon it's not that big of a deal make sure that the, the entry to the room is closed off just like you see the gate there you see her um, the evidence that she has tried to do a jailbreak um, the good news is that just do a dust bath first then you have the evidence of where they went so that's my plan if she ever gets out I've got her trail she can't get anywhere um, and protect the wires. So you guys already saw that I'm a, a moron and have the electrical wire for the shop back. That's it. So these are all tied up.
for the lights for the YouTube area. Everything is my computer monitors here, no cords draping down. Everything is just safe put away, but I've got the couch, you know, I've got the table, I've got the chairs for this desk here. I am horrible at making videos, people. I am working on it. I kid you not, I'm trying to do like a photography video type class so I can learn how not to make people throw up on these videos from my horrible skills. So bear with me as the channel grows and, you know, I clearly want to get better at this. And I clearly, I know that people are buying chinchillas and that they or a very loved pet, so I know that this channel eventually will mean something or help somebody, so that's the entire plan. Um, you know, the, they're such fragile animals, but they're bought in such frequency, and they're so much more unknown about them compared to, you know, rabbits, hamsters. Hamsters, you throw the bedding in there, you, you interact with them, they're great pets, nothing against them, but they're just not as scary as the chinchillas for some reason. Like. There's this misconception that these chinchillas are hard to take care of, um, that they're a lot of work, which cleaning the cage is the only work you've got. If you can't handle opening a cage door and letting them roll around in a bowl, then you shouldn't get one because, I mean, that requires you pressing two fingers together to open a cage, setting a bowl on the floor and saying, good morning. Then you put them back in the cage and you are done. And you've technically done everything ethical for the day with owning one. Do they have to go to the vets? Sure. I haven't had to deal with it. Um, they do get sick like any other animal. They can get sick fairly easily. But other animals can too. I've probably spent thousands of dollars on my lab. You know, he eats rocks. He eats mud. I mean, my dog is the biggest idiot on the planet. Like if it's an object that will fit between his mouth and his jaw, he's going to consume it. And that costs vet bills. Chinchillas are kind of the same way. You know, they chew. They, they like to explore. But if you're just somewhat careful, you're fine. They're not the hardest animal to take care of. Yes, they can jump six feet. Yes, they can um, get up on these counters, these tables, all sorts of stuff. But they're easy, 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 easy to take care of. Um, I do a half an hour a day. That's the bare minimum. Unless, like I said, I was in Vegas for a marketing type thing. So I was out half hour a day. I come down here. I open these cage doors, I let her out, I fill up her hay, her water, I check for anything just randomly in a stupid situation that could be unsafe. Um, examples of that could be like her water bottle, the nozzles being clogged, um, just the common sense type things. And you, wash, you buy these $65 fleece liners for this cage, you throw them in a washer and dryer. Or, well, actually, I'm lying. Don't do that. Do not throw it in a dryer. You, you don't do that. But they're literally washing in that washing machine right now. And it looks like it has 11 minutes left on the timer. I probably put it in there right before I started this video. Um, she's over here trying to play Nintendo right now. But it, it's that easy. Um, if you can't get them out, so I work down here. I think that that's clear to everybody that this is my office down here. This is where I work. Um, I'm with her all day. That may not be as good as coming out to play, but that's interaction. That's what they want. They want to be social. If you can't get another chinchilla and you can never be around them or let them out, don't get one. If you can do anything to be around them for just a little bit of time per day, they're awesome. My kid loves her. My wife loves her. My wife is a freak about animals and shedding anything like that. She hates, um, Except the fact that my dog sheds like seven pounds of fur a day, so I don't really understand the logic behind it. But I got lucky because chinchillas don't really shed, so I don't. I haven't, you know, deep cleaned my entire basement. You don't see a bunch of hair floating around. No dust up on the track lights. I do clean those about once a month because eventually there will be a little dander. Um, that's it. Easy. Get a chinchilla. If you're thinking about it, go buy one. They're awesome. You get 15 to 20 years out of them. You spend a couple hundred bucks in the beginning and then they are one of the cheapest animals you can own. If you're nervous about certain things, go to my blog. I write about anything I can think of, what they sleep in, what they eat, what they drink, what they do, how they sleep, where they sleep. Anything you can think of is on that blog, which is at planetchinchilla.com, which is P-L-A-N-E-T chinchilla.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. Guys, please, if you're newer to the channel, like, subscribe, drop a comment, interact with me. Tell me the video sucks. If it sucks, it, it's not going to offend me. I know it sucks. 
just any kind of interaction with the community that people are looking for this information would be great. Besides that, I'll, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.